But this young girl, this that I'm talking about here that came to me, she had not abused her body. She was not very overweight at all. She was a pretty slim, trim woman. Now then, by being a slim, trim woman, she still had the issue of going to the back doctor two and three times a week. She had brain tumors and she had already had surgery and she was not recovering very rapidly. And the allergies and the asthma she had was just driving her crazy. So she heard about us and came to our healing school. And when she came up for prayer, she told me, I've never heard the word of God taught like this, but she said, I never heard anybody say that my sickness is caused by sin until I heard you. Then when I told her, I said, well, what sin did you commit? She immediately knew when she moved in with this boy 27, 28 years ago, that was sin. And some of you in this room may have done the same thing. You may be the boy or the girl. It makes no difference which one you are. If you have sex out of wedlock and you've never repented of it and cleaned yourself up by casting out those spirits that came in, you still have those spirits in your body. And those spirits will make you sick. They can afflict you. They can afflict your children. They can do all kinds of things. And most people in the church today don't even know these things. But anyway, this girl didn't know it. And so whenever she repented, she asked God to forgive her. He forgave her. And then when I asked her what scripture she's going to use, she didn't have a clue. And she said, you mean I have to have a scripture? I said, did the Lord say there in Jeremiah 1.12 that he watches over his word to perform his word? Is that what he said? Does he perform his word? Okay, if God performs his word, don't you think it would be a good idea that when we come to him, we come to him with one of his promises? Wouldn't that make sense? Yeah. So I told her, I said, we have a wonderful promise in Matthew 18, 19. I said, now I want, I want you to see what the Lord said there in Matthew 18, 19. And look what he said. Look at this. This promise is made for you. It's made for everybody in the church. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them by my Father which is in heaven. Now, what kind of a promise is that? Now, I wonder why we never use those kind of promises. You know, most people in the church don't know that verse. But yet that verse is for you. Now, so you come to God like this. Oh, God, please, Lord, be merciful to me. Please, I'm hurting. I'm in pain down here. Don't you see me? Yeah, he sees you. He's saying you do it the way I said, and I'll take care of you. But people don't do it his way, so they don't get it. They don't, they don't pray in faith. I told her, I said, you, you, you take this scripture. Now, does that scripture say if two of us, where? Agree, and we're where? On earth. On earth. Now, right now, are all of us in this room on earth? Now then, could it be possible that we could agree upon something? I would hope so. As if we're going to try, you know, if we're going to try to, we're going to work on getting somebody healed, you're going to have to convince that person that number one, the first thing they got to do is find out what sin they committed that caused their problem. Because as I'm going to show you in a minute, if you don't sin, you ain't never going to be sick. If you don't sin, there's going to be no sickness. And so... Uh, it, it, most of the church does not believe this, but I'm going to back it up with Scripture. But anyway, after we had the girl confess her sin, after we found the Scripture, Matthew 18, 19, I said, now then, the Scripture says, when I ask for something, I must ask in faith, nothing wavering. I said, now that's in James chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Now I want you to see this Scripture. When I ask for something, it, in verse 6 and 7, it says, but let him ask in faith, Nothing wavering. Now, how hard is that? When you ask God for something, almost everybody I know wavers. I ask them when they pray. After you've repented of your sin, you found a scripture to stand on. I say, now then, when you pray, can you pray in faith? Well, I hope so. I'm not too sure. I said, that, do you not see what that says? Look at what that says. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm here to teach you what is going to work for you or what's not going to work for you. And I want you to look at that board up there and see if what I'm telling you is what God says. See, some people just don't think God will do what he said. 
Well, look what he says. Let him ask in faith. How much wavering? No wavering? I mean, my goodness gracious, what does God expect from us, his children? Does he expect us to have faith? Yeah, that's what he's raising up. A, 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 a body that has faith that's going to reign and rule with him through eternity. Amen. And he does not want a bunch of whimps. And that's what we are in the church. I was one of those many years of my life. I was a whimp, you know, and it didn't make me happy when somebody called me a whimp, especially since I'm a guy. You know, if I'm out there here, I'm six foot two or three, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm, I used to weigh about, well, 180, 190 pounds most of my life, around 180, and I'd never considered myself a whimp. I mean, whenever we were going to do something, in fact, I'd, I, I shouldn't say it like this, but I, I prided myself, which is wrong, back when I was younger. If the other boys, I was raised up as a mechanic and an engineer and everything else. And if we were going to work on something and they couldn't get something loose, I'd tell them, come get the old man. He'll show you boys how to do it. <laughs> and I would always get it off. I mean, just the other day, a couple of guys that worked for me was trying to get the lug nuts off the front wheel of a G big GMC dump truck. And they could not get two, one of those boys weighed 250 pounds, the other one weighed about 180 pounds. And those two boys could not get part of those lug nuts off of that jump truck. And they called and said, Thurman, we hate to call on you, but we can't get these lug nuts off. I said, okay, you wimps. I said, I'll be over there in a little while. I said, so y'all gonna call the old man, huh? I mean, you know, now us guys, when you get older, I went over there and broke every one of those. They had, a, they had a piece of pipe about three foot long on the end of a lug wrench. And I said, no problem, guys. I said, let me get this six footer. I went out there and got a six footer and I stood on that thing and broke them things loose and I got them all loose. I said, okay, now boys, you wimps, next time y'all need something, call the old man, he'll take care of you. <laughs> How many of y'all know that's pride? Y'all know that's pride? You know, I had to repent and say, God, I'm sorry. But you know, as a man, do we like to show off? <laughs> I mean, unless you're different than all the rest of us, if you're a man, you love to show off when you can do something, right? I mean, that's just the way we are made. God made us like that, guys. So it's not, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to walk in love all the time because God said he hates pride. And so if you want to see God keep doing things, just stay in pride. I guarantee if you stay in it and don't repent for it, it won't be long. He won't do nothing for you. So I don't like that. I want, to, I want God to answer my prayer when I pray, just like this woman we're working with. So, but he says there, when I prayed for her, I told her, I said, you know, now, number one, you had never repented for your sin. Now you've repented of your sin. I said, now you've never had a scripture, but now you've got Matthew 18, 19. Wasn't that an awesome scripture? You know, it's wonderful, the promises that God gave us. So I said, now then we lack one thing, and you'll find your answer in John, I mean in James 1, 6 and 7. He says, but we must ask him in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. No, now. Do you think that really means what it says? Yeah, it sure does. You don't have to have a rocket scientist to interpret that. You don't have to have a PhD from the seminary to tell you that's not what that means. All you got to do is read that and see what God says. And he says, after you repented of sin, after you get a verse to stand on, then you pray in faith, nothing wavering, and I guarantee you'll get your answer. Amen. Every time. So I told the lady, I said, now that you've repented for sleeping with that boy back when you was 18, 19, 20 years old, whatever, and there's been a lot of men and women done this, and they've never repented, and then they wondered why they have all the problems they have later in life and with their children. So anyway, she repented. We got us the scripture. I said, now, young lady, I'm going to pray for you in faith. And when I pray for you, I'm going to guarantee you that the king of the universe is going to heal every one of your problems. Now somebody says, how in the world can you make a statement like that? Well, how could I make any other kind of a statement? If he says right there, I have to pray in faith, nothing wavering, what am I going to say? Well, I'm going to pray for you and let's hope God will do something. Maybe he's out to the bathroom. 
You know, maybe he's sleeping in this morning. No, I don't think so. Do you? No, God neither sleeps nor slumbers. He's always there. And he only honors his word. And so when I tell him, I'm going to pray for you now in faith, and you repented of every sin, right? Yes. Now that we're going to take Matthew 18, 19 to base our faith on, yes. Then I'm going to pray for you in faith, young woman, and I'm going to guarantee you in the name of Jesus on behalf of his word, which cannot come back to him void, I'm going to guarantee when I pray for you, he's going to heal you from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Amen. I did it his way. Amen. And guess what? That woman that had been sick for 30 years, when I prayed for her, her back pain left. The brain tumors left. The allergies left. That woman has been working for us in the ministry for the last 10 years. She is completely healed of everything. And her name is Sharon Jones.